Quite a few years ago now, I used to be a minister of a church at Lantwick Major in the Vale of Glamorgan. It was a village rooted in history. Its original name was Llanifdid Vaur, and in the early centuries AD there was a monastery there, and one of its abbots, Samson, had a connection with the monastery on Caldy Island off the Pembrokeshire coast. As far as Methodism was concerned, John Wesley made many visits to Fonmon Castle just a few miles away, and small Methodist communities eventually grew up in St. Athan, Plantwit and Cowbridge. While I was there back in the 1970s as the Methodist minister, the large RAF camp of St. Athan was just a few miles up the road, and a retired RAF sergeant used to come to worship with his wife. Sometimes I used to visit his home, and I used to get a real grilling. He used to tell me quite openly that he was an unbeliever, but just went to church to keep his wife company. So whenever I visited their home, I knew I was in for a right going over, as he tried to put my faith and beliefs to the sword. It was all in good humour, mind. So I used to grimly defend my beliefs in God, in Jesus, in the Holy Spirit, and so on. You name it, and I had to defend it. But one day in his home, we were arguing about the church, and he was telling me in no uncertain terms how much that was bad had been caused by zealots in the church. And then he amazed me by saying that there was one thing on which he had to admit defeat. One issue which he couldn't demolish. And that was that the church had survived for 2,000 years. He couldn't understand it. He said everything else in history had failed. All dictators had gone. All empires had founded. All philosoph philosophers had been seen to be human. But the one golden thread linking history since Jesus was the church. Despite its failures, Despite its weaknesses, despite its fractures and splits, it was still in being. And on any one Sunday in the world, a thousand million people go into a place of Christian worship. He just couldn't understand it. If you're a Christian approaching Easter Sunday, that's the day when we can understand it. The risen Jesus is true to his word. The church, whatever its failings, is the vehicle by which Jesus presents his good news to the world. It was his power which keeps it in being. Sadly, in some places it will struggle, but in other places the church will grow rapidly, but there will always be a church. So when we get to Easter Sunday, there is the church for all to see. The very gates of hell, as Jesus has promised, have not prevailed against it. Jesus is risen, his church still stands, and if Jesus is true to his word, then he is also true to us in other ways. For example, the risen Jesus has also promised that because he has risen, then we can rise as well. So we can stride forward every day in the knowledge that the risen power of Jesus is with us. And even when we die, that is not the end, but the risen Jesus will meet us in death, so that death is no more, and we are alive in him. Before I went in for the ministry, I was a school teacher in Birmingham. And one Saturday on the eve of Easter, my wife and I found a Serbian Orthodox church on the outskirts of the city. We got out of our car and we went into this lovely, splendid new church, which was built in the round. The caretaker was there, getting ready for Easter worship, and all the seats had been removed. So I asked the caretaker what was going on. So he said, well, tomorrow, the priest will stand at the altar with a lighted candle and then all the congregation will come to the altar with their candle and they will light it from the central candle which stands for the risen Jesus. Then they will take up the position around the circular church to show that the light of Jesus was being taken into the world. Now within the church when Easter day comes we have a light and it's a tremendous light it assures us that the church will always survive and also that we as Christians will survive. But that light is not just for us, it's for the world in which we live. Like that Serbian Orthodox Church, we must take that joy of a risen Jesus out into the world and then that will bring light to a dark world and bring hope to people in their darkness.